Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I got an email this week that just was really good, and I wanted to share with you the viewer question that was posed to me, and I also want to talk about whether or not we'll ever see a plug-in hybrid version of the Toyota Tundra, and it's part of the email as well, and this has been a conversation happening online in the comments below all these videos, especially F-150 Lightning videos, as we saw those videos come out and how I drove them lightning around, we talked about towing, we, we kind of understand now the Lightning is a very unique vehicle, very niche vehicle. It just can't do the job it needs to all the time in rural areas, especially with little charging infrastructure. But I want to share some details in this video, in this email. And I want to talk about a few things. And one of the things he brings up is Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE and how that's an option as well. And I can tell you, I've drove the Jeep, Jeep Grand Cherokee last week and had an epiphany on why we can't have a plug-in version of a full-size truck after driving that around for a week. So Buckle up. It's going to be interesting. Let's, let's get to this. I'm going to use some software here called StreamYard. It's the best way I can use and display on the screen the different web browsers I want to use. So I'm sorry if the quality is not quite perfect, but it's a, it's good software. So let me first of all make sure I get my ducks in a row. I think I have it all set up here. So let's, let's pull up my email first. Put myself in the corner. I'll play narrator. And so this is an email from Tim Mitchell, and I'll kind of summarize this. Him and his family live in Montana, where they get uh, really three seasons, uh, winter, fall, spring, uh, summer. <laughs> they don't get spring. Uh, he's about, he's that way. Currently, they have an all-wheel drive van and a Prius V, but he, like most families these days, has bought a 2,900-pound camper, and they want to have a vehicle to travel with it. They want to tow with it. And this happens a lot. I'm hearing these emails all the time. And I'm getting emails from my friends like that because people want to get out adventuring. One thing COVID showed us was outside's good. Go outside. So um, what I another part I love the email I love is that the second part, and I'll see if I can't highlight this in the screen. I may, may not be able to, but he's talking about his driving patterns and he's really thought this stuff through. Driving patterns and follow follows 90% of the driving around town, less than basically less than 10 miles a day. They barely drive over 25 miles a day, even running the kids around, the activities, things like that. I know that works. Um, he's talking about a couple times they go out of the, out of, they want to twice a month, they go out camping, they go out to cab family cabin, they get out there to camp and fish. And then he also talks a couple times a year, they actually drive the West Coast, visit families and friends. So he's got a mix of in-town driving and he's got a mix of uh, weekend driving, like a weekend road trip, and he's got a mix of long distance family trips. Um, and so it's currently the so far, the vehicles work from all right, but he'd love to have a four-wheel drive with more ground clearance, which I completely understand with Montana, and some more towing ability to be able to tow this trailer around and tow everybody with him. And so what I want to address here is a couple things, is that first, he's also looked at he's looked at the Toyota Tundra. He was excited about it until the mile per gallon came out, the hybrid, and how it wasn't very good mile per gallon. Uh, it wasn't really big big improvement there. F50 hybrid, you may know that I had the, that power boost, they call it, I had it two years ago. I have the Tundra right now, so a lot of videos on this channel, both trucks. And he was—he likes it a lot, but he just wasn't impressed by the fuel economy. Um, and it, it isn't a very fuel-efficient vehicle. It really is not. The 247 is actually more fuel-efficient highway. And people, I, again, people go from SUV world to truck world. They see hybrid, hybrid. And then they go, wait a minute, hybrid doesn't match hybrid. Hybrid truck doesn't seem like it matches hybrid SUV. Especially because being a Toyota fan, Toyota owner, he, I'm going to call him fan. He's got a Sienna and he's got a Prius. Uh, he understands Toyota's technology in hybrid is pretty good, but it is a head scratcher when you get to the full size truck out. It doesn't really match up. Uh, he did look at the Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 e His big concern is how expensive it is. Looking at its summit, the $74,000, it can tow 6,000 pounds, so it seems like it checks all the boxes. That's a, I'm going to put an asterisk there. There's more to this than that's going to be. And then he looks at the GMC diesel. He's talking about, but it, he's talking about more stuff on this email. But the biggest thing is he wants to know are there going to be. Toyota plug-in hybrid EV possibilities in 2024. Impressive Toyota Prime technology. That RAV4 Prime is really good. They have a plug-in hybrid Tundra Tacoma. He'd have his order in already. So um, I think either one would be a good option for him, except for, I will tell you, he has, since he's got dogs, he's got kids in car seats, the coma is kind of tight. So keep that in mind. It's it, You're going to have a little bit harder time getting car seats and the kids in there at that stage of life. Trust me. Stay home, Dad, both my kids. <laughs> I, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, Tacoma's going to be a little tight in the rear, and Tundra's a lot more roomy. And so the Tundra's going to be more like your Sienna, have more room there. Uh, he just wants to know if there's something coming out soon. He, he's, he's willing to wait if he can get something that has good in-town fuel economy. He can plug it and get some miles out, miles out of it, and he can tow with it and go long distance with it. Seems like it's perfect. That's what people are wanting these days. So what I was doing was I was driving the Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 bay around, and I came across this. 
And unfortunately, it doesn't come out quite clear. And I took a photo of it somewhere. I got to find it. Anyways, uh, this is the payload sticker on the Jeep, Jeep Grand Cherokee 4B. It says 1,050 pounds of payload. That's terrible. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely terrible. And one of the things I thought with his, in his email he didn't really address was payload. He talked about the 4BE can tow 6,000 pounds, but how much can it actually tow? And this is where I think things get a little bit confusing. So payload is a huge part of towing. So what you're doing here, and let me put, put myself on the screen a little bit bigger so I can explain this like this, is you have a camper, 2,900 pounds of camper. You have a truck or an SUV, whatever. When you hook that camper to that truck, trucks squat a little bit or the camper squats a little or the SUV squats a little bit because you're transferring the weight from the camper to the truck. Okay, so if I have 2,900 pounds of camper, most on, I'm say, on average, overall average, tongue weight is between 10, I've heard 15%, I've heard 5%, whatever. Depends on the trailer you have. Double check that. Look, there's usually on the on the tongue of the trailer, there's a sticker and it talks about how much tongue weights can be transferred to, to the vehicle. So let's just take 10%. So that's 290 pounds of weight you're going to transfer from the trailer to the truck. So if you have a thousand pounds of towing, right, or payload, excuse me, thousand pounds of payload, you really only have 700 pounds left in the cabin for uh, your kids, you yourself, and your wife or your spouse. Your dogs, your um, your luggage, that's all you have left until you're maxed out. When you're maxed out, then you have a rougher ride. You feel the economy really goes down the hill. You're putting more strain on the powertrain, more strain on the shock suspension. It's just not something you want to do. So uh, I was looking at this going, wow, 1,050 pounds of um, payload in a Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 but In my mind, I was like, okay, I really can't tow anything unless I'm by myself. Because once I add myself and my wife and our kids and stuff, I'll be overloaded immediately. It, it's so fast. Now, payload also does include a full tank of gas. Keep that in mind, too. And then I thought to myself, well, why do I only have 1,050 pounds of, of payload? This is kind of ridiculous. I should have a lot more payload. And I'm thinking, man, if that's going to be that low. So then I started Googling it. So let's go back to the Google. Let's go back to the Google. And uh, if we look at the Google here, the Jeep Grand Cherokee curb weight, this is not the... 4 by 8 which is their plug-in hybrid version. It's 4,400 4, pounds to 4,780 pounds. So 4,200 pounds to 4,800 pounds is kind of our range, okay? The Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 by e is 1,000 pounds heavier <laughs> than the base, and it's, uh, what are you going to have, uh, 500 pounds more than the top end of the gas. And so the thing here is, you got to re remember, is that the chassis and frame are the same, that is adding the battery. And so, wow, does that battery weigh a ton, right? The Jeep 4 by 8 is really heavy. And we know like the GMC Hummer is a really heavy vehicle. And so when you're adding batteries to these, you're trying to get more range, but you're having this physics problem going on, right? So uh, you add more battery to get more in-town range, but the vehicle is heavier, which requires more energy to make the vehicle move. So obviously you're going to have less range. And then I had it over here. I was looking at, the payload for the Jeep Grand Cherokee is from 1,200 pounds to 1,800 pounds. So really, if you want a Jeep Grand Cherokee to tow 6,000 pounds, or with a, with tow your camper and have the family, you really have to go with a gas version because the 4 by e when you look at the curb weight and look at the payload, um, you're going to have a really heavy vehicle towing a really um, a, towing a trailer. Fuel economy is going to be a real big problem, <laughs> real big problem, and you're going to have a lot less payload. I mean... So those are really things con to consider. And then I thought about, well, what would happen in a Tundra? What would happen What would happen in a full-size truck if you decided to put a, a, a battery in there, right? My goodness, that's going to weigh a lot, right? And what's your range going to be like? So the Greek Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 b the range they said is at best, optimal, sunny day, no wind, 75 degrees out, driving 25 miles an hour around town is 25 miles of range at best i we've done real world testing on the i've done the regular four by e and i've done um lightning and that kind of stuff and real world is not even close to what the stated numbers are so you're looking at probably 20 maybe 15 20 in the winter time in montana of real world range around town which would be fine for your daily drive that you could do electric only but then you start well you start doing a full-size truck and I looked at the full size truck and I thought, okay, what's going? What, what would be the full size truck? So look at the, look at this. 
The curb weight of the Toyota Tundra is 5,000 to 5,800 pounds. Now let's go back in time. And that is around the same curb weight as a Jeep Grand Cherokee 4x8. Uh, again, the higher trim level, more features, 5,800 pounds, but I have a couple hundred pounds difference. And understand something here, even looking at the Google pictures, you can tell that the Tundra, from an aerodynamic standpoint, is a lot worse <laughs> than the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Grand Cherokee is like a, a like a, a speedy bullet, and the, the Tundra is like a big lumbering brick, right? I mean, it's the aerodynamics. So you, you're heavy, aerodynamics worse, and then you go hybrid powertrain. And, I mean, you're pushing over 6,000 pounds of towing. And look at the, th or the curb weight, and look at the 5,710 pounds. That's damn near close to the top end of the gas engine. Now, in my Tundra, I believe, if I recall top of my head, my payload's about 1,500 pounds, and I have the gas-only version. So once you start adding the plug-in hybrid, and you start adding all that more uh, weight to it, uh, you're going to have you know, maybe 1,200 pounds of payload, which is terrible in a full-size truck. And then what's your range going to be like? 10, 15 miles of range, maybe? top optimal temperatures that and then you're gonna have more expense right so the jeep grand cherokee 4 e versus the gas engine the starting base price it's about twenty thousand dollars difference twenty thousand dollars difference for what 15 20 miles around town of of electric only range oh, that's i mean it's it i could see people making the case for it because people are not making the case for it but i just when i look at this numbers look at the physics and look at the what's going on i just think to myself like there's no way we're going to have a plug-in hybrid version of a Tundra until the size of those batteries becomes much smaller and much more efficient. Until they become lighter, more efficient, and they get more range, we're not going to see a plug-in version of Tundra because it just doesn't work. Now, he also says, what a plug-in version of the, of the Tacoma. I think the Tacoma is going to have similar problems that you can have with a Tundra with weight, with range, with you know, all the, the cold temperatures, that kind of stuff happening with that. I think we can see more of a, I'd like to see more of a RAV4 prime version of the Tundra. I'd like to see more of a, just a straight hybrid version of the Tundra that actually is tuned for fuel economy. Now they can take those Tundras, they take the hybrid versions of the Tundra and the F50, they can, they can tune that more fuel efficiency. You can drive a little bit more fuel, more fuel efficient, but until the physics of this change, until we get, you know, again, a, a vehicle that actually makes sense with the curb weight makes sense. Battery makes sense, whose range makes sense, and a price point that's not twenty grand more. I just I can I don't ever foresee Toyota doing this until years go by and they're forced to buy emissions or forced to whatever. Um, I just don't know that a plug-in hybrid truck actually works. And I and that was my epiphany when I was driving around. I was thinking about this stuff like, yeah, I use the plug-in hybrid in my area. I could I drive ten miles a day, twenty miles a day. But when you start looking at the physics of it, start looking at the price point, start looking at the batteries, start looking at the all stuff that it would happen that that vehicle and the complexity of it. I think you're never going to see it. Now, you did point out in the – Tim did say in his email – good name, Tim uh, – that uh, he was looking at a used truck as well. Uh, you can do a used truck parking inside the house. I always hate that because I've learned one thing with vehicles. They do better when you drive them. When you let them sit, things happen. Wiring goes weird. Things go funky. Battery dies. The vehicles are much better when you drive them. But you're trying to make one vehicle fit all those needs. I just don't think it's possible. I think what you're going to end up doing is you end up buying a half ton truck or you buy something, even like a full size three row SUV. And you're just going to have to deal with the fact it's not going to do well in the city. It's just, there's not a good option for you today, but maybe the fans know something, put some comments down below. What do you guys think? What the, what the gentleman should do in his area? What do you think about plug-in hybrid? Do you think you'll ever see one or do you think that I'm right or I'm wrong? I've been hearing a lot of that lately, <laughs> Put those comments down below as well. Uh, website is pickuptrucktalk.com. We have more details over there. Check out the videos on the screen. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.